Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I want to make gnocchi today. I've only ever made it one time before, and it came out perfect, which was odd, because many years ago I took an Italian cooking course that ran about 30 weeks at the beginning of every quarter the chef would ask the class, is there any particular recipe you would like to try this quarter? And invariably, someone would raise their hand and say, gnocchi. And the chef would object, no, no, it's too difficult, it's too complicated, there's too many things that can go wrong. We never made gnocchi in the class. I found a recipe that came out great. In looking at recipes since then, I'm surprised that for something that is supposed to be so difficult and can come out wrong so many different ways, I'm surprised how much variations there are in the various recipes. So I want to experiment with them today, mostly because I want to try textures. The first time I ate gnocchi, I was surprised that it didn't have a more al dente pasta texture. Well, it's not pasta. They're potato dumplings, very soft, very tender, melt in your mouth texture. One recipe described it as comfort food. They are really delicious. So. Let's get into the ingredients that I'm going to be using today to experiment with gnocchi. Some of these numbers aren't going to look right because as I mentioned, I want to experiment today with different formulas so I have some extra stuff here. But to make enough gnocchi to feed six to eight people, you're gonna need about a pound or 450 grams of starchy potatoes such as russets, which is what I have here. Avoid waxy or new potatoes. You'll need one and a quarter cups, six ounces, 170 grams of all-purpose flour, more for dusting. Avoid bread flour because that's higher in protein. It's the proteins that give you the gluten chains that make bread dough nice and elastic, but you don't want elasticity in your gnocchi because that's what makes them gummy. I'm even gonna experiment with cake flour today, which is lower in protein than all-purpose flour. And then finally, salt and freshly ground nutmeg to taste. Some of the recipes that I've read say that water is the enemy of gnocchi. So they don't recommend boiling potatoes, although some recipes do say to boil the potatoes. Some say bake. That cookbook that I like says to steam them. So I have here my vegetable steaming pan. It's got perforations in the bottom of that upper upper part. I'm going to put some water in the bottom pan, bring it up to a boil, put my potatoes in there, and then steam these. I know these are going to take about 60 to 80 minutes to be cooked thoroughly all the way through. You can test doneness by piercing them with a fork. I think it's best to use a digital thermometer when they come up to about 205 to 210 degrees internal temperature, that's when they're done. You want to steam these whole with the skins on. So I've brought a cup and a half roughly of water, that's about 350 milliliters, to a boil. After thoroughly scouring my potatoes, get them clean, I put those in that basket. I'm going to put my lid on there, which just barely fits. And as I said, that's going to go for anywhere for an hour to maybe an hour and 10 minutes for those to be thoroughly cooked. Meanwhile, I'm going to reduce my heat down to medium low. I'm just going to steam those. While the potatoes are steaming, I thought I would go over some of the utensils you might need. This is my potato ricer, and this is my finest screen. Basically, that just fits in the bottom like that, and that'll be used for ricing the potatoes. Gnocchi typically has lines on it. You can use a fork. I have a gnocchi board. You can roll the gnocchi over to make the lines. I also have an antique butter board that I bought. This has ridges in it as well. I use this mostly for pasta, but I thought I might try it today making gnocchi. The ridges are smaller and closer together compared to the gnocchi board. Oh, and by the way, for a fork, use one with small, close tines rather than big forks. You could, if you wanted to, even use a comb. Obviously, you don't want to borrow the family comb from the bathroom. 
If you're going to use a comb for making gnocchi, you go out and buy a brand new one, keep it wrapped in plastic in your utensils drawer so that it doesn't end up being used in everybody's hair. You don't want dandruff in your gnocchi, right? So those are some utensils that you can use for making gnocchi. My potatoes steamed for just one hour. You want to peel these while they're still warm. So I'm just going to rest this on a towel. Peel that skin off. It comes off very easily. It's hot though. And now I want to put this in pieces in my potato ricer. So I'm just going to cut this into chunks like so. And this here is just my all-purpose flour. I set aside little bowls with my different experiments. This is a little bit less flour than I mentioned in the ingredients because my potato doesn't weigh a full pound. So I'll put a couple pieces in there and then rice this right onto the flour. I have a little, I call this a bench scraper. I actually bought that in a arts and crafts store. It's a glue spreader. And that's the last of it. Now here's the tricky part. If you overwork your potatoes, you know if you've made mashed potatoes, your potatoes will get gummy. If you overwork your flour, it'll build up gluten chains and it'll get gummy. So at this point, what you want to do is just very gently, without working this too hard, start mixing in your flour and get the two mixed together. First thing that's going to happen is the steam is going to collect that flour and adhere it to the potatoes. And that's a jet going overhead. Yes, I live near the airport. This really is a trailer park, folks. until you start getting most of that flour incorporated. Not all of it's going to incorporate just yet, but now, while it's still warm, start kneading this in. Actually, before I do that, I want to grate in some of my nutmeg. If you don't have a nutmeg grater, consider looking for one. They are great gadgets to have. And then maybe half a teaspoon of salt. Continuing to work here, I'm going to start kneading this together until I have a homogenous, homogenous dough here. Again, trying not to overwork it. Some recipes say to knead for three or four minutes. I don't know that that's necessary. See, that's starting to come together into a really nice paste. And it's not feeling too wet at all. In fact, that mixture feels just perfect. Okay, I'm going to ball this up and set this back in my little bowl with my tag on it for my experiment and let that rest for a bit. Clean up my table here and then work with one of my other experiments. 
This is my potato and cake flour. So again, I want to put a little bit of salt in there. And some of my nutmeg. That'll be good. And the same thing, gingerly bring this together without working it too much. I'm going to scrape that up, put it into a mound, and set that in my bowl. Again, that's labeled this one with cake flour. Again, clean up my mess and move on to my next experiment. Okay, so there's those potatoes. And this is on top of my flour that has the potato flakes in it from the instant mashed potatoes mix. And let's see if I can bring this together into a dough. It's feeling moist. Yes, that is coming together. I'm not going to need any water. I'm pretty confident I won't need any water. In fact, that's coming together very nicely. Look at that. So far, I like that best of all. And therefore, this gnocchi should be the most potato-y, if I can say that. So there's the last of my potatoes. Now it's all four potatoes. And this is the one that I want to work some egg into. So I beat up some eggs, a couple of eggs. I'm not going to use all of that. And I increased my flour here by an extra ounce. Because this is going to be egg and flour, I expect this to have a texture closer to that of pasta. So I'm just going to add a little bit of my egg, not much, and then see what happens as I bring this together. Okay, that's starting to come together now. I can feel it. So let me just push this together into a dough. I'm thinking if you want a really pasta texture to this gnocchi, I don't know why you would, but you could use semolina flour. There is semolina gnocchi out there. I've seen recipes for it. Okay, and that is coming together into a dough. I'm probably going to have to use my flour duster a lot when I work with this one because this feels sticky. Okay, so going back to my very first dough here. This is just flour, potato, salt, and nutmeg. This is the original recipe that I started with. I'm going to dust my counter with flour here. And you want to roll this into a long stick or pencil that's less than an inch, maybe what, two centimeters, three quarters of an inch wide. And then using my glue spreader here, Cut this into segments of about an inch or two and a half centimeters in length. And how I rolled these, let's start with my gnocchi board. Then I'm going to flour my board and again flour these so they don't stick to my fingers. And then kind of roll it into a little bit of a, 
a ball and press it into the board with my thumb and at the same time pull back and I get that little pillow shape with the grooves in it. I'm going to do a close-up on that so you can see what it looks like. So again, kind of just roll that into a little bit of a ball. It doesn't have to be exact. And then place it on the gnocchi board. And then with your thumb, press it down and roll it at the same time along the board. And that gives you your little pillow-shaped grooved gnocchi. Let's try one with the butterboard. This should give me a slightly different look. The grooves should be closer together, a little bit smaller. And the grooves are a lot finer. How most people do it, make sure I flour that fork well. is they just roll it over the tine of a, tines of a fork. Gives you really large grooves there. And just out of curiosity, let me try my dandruff catcher here. Smear it onto the fork. These tines aren't very long, the teeth. So I don't know how well they're going to work. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. So there's some ideas for rolling gnocchi. I've got a lot to roll. I've, I've labeled different bowls with the same ingredients as I've got in my raw ingredients to my left over here so that I can then boil each of these separately and see how my various formulas taste. So there are my various gnocchi. I have to say the ones that were the easiest to work with and as far as holding their shape and looking beautiful were the ones made with the cake flour. The two that were close second was the original made with just the potatoes and the all-purpose flour and of course they all had salt and nutmeg and those the ones that were made with the egg was also fairly easy to work with. These here the ones that were made with the potato flakes those were the most difficult. I suspect these might fall apart in the cooking because they were hard, they were difficult to get to stay together while I was shaping the dough. How I'm going to eat these is I made some pesto this morning. This is rather dry. I'm going to be adding a lot more olive oil to this when, I'm, when I get ready to use it. I'm going to cook each of these. I have water boiling on the stove and I'm going to sample them to see how the texture is for each of these different types of gnocchi. Gnocchi cook in only about two or three minutes. Most recipes say when they float, they're done. These are the ones that are just potato and flour and salt and nutmeg. As you can see, I added a lot of oil to my pesto because you don't want a really thick pesto on this. Gnocchi has a very light flavor. Pesto has a very strong flavor. So you don't want to overpower the flavor with the pesto. Let's see what this texture is like. Very soft, very delicate. Let me move these aside and move on to my next one. These are on the gnocchi made with the cake flour. I have to say, these look the prettiest. Again, cover those lightly with... and see how these taste. Very soft and a little bit chewy. Not quite as soft as that first batch. So the cake flour did give it a slightly chewier texture without adding any gumminess. That surprised me. I expected this to be the softest of them all. Okay, ready to move on to another one. This is the gnocchi I made with the potato flakes. This 
They're a little bit sticky, but I don't know. I think they're going to taste good. I'm encouraged by the looks of them when they're cooked. Sticky. Even in there, they're sticky, and look, they're starting to break up a little bit. Let me see what one of these tastes like. Not bad. Definitely the softest and the most, not really gummy, not as gummy as the store-bought gnocchi I tried for the texture, but definitely the softest and almost pasty of them all. My last sample is the gnocchi made with the egg. Cooked really nice. Held together nicely. I can tell just by moving these around that there's a very firm texture to these caused by the egg, I'm sure. All right, let's taste one of these and see what it's like. Just a, a little bit more chewy. Almost the same texture as that made with the cake flour. So I would say, of these four gnocchis, the ones that I like the best, I think the original with just the flour, the all-purpose flour, and the riced potatoes, I would say those are the best because I like the texture. Very soft, very much like comfort food. The gnocchi made with the egg and the gnocchi made with the cake flour both have a, a little bit more chewy texture. If you like a more al dente texture, I would use one or the other of those. The one that I liked least was the one made with the dried potato flakes. So there you have it. Four different formulas for making gnocchi. They all came out decent in the end. They didn't break up in the boiling water. I still see no reason why the Italian chef who conducted that Italian cooking course should panic about making gnocchi. They were successful, every single one of them. Although I preferred the texture of some over the others and preferred the texture of the gnocchi made with the dry potato flakes the least, all of them were better than the package stuff that I bought in the store. Which, of course, makes a lot of sense. Anything that's made at home with fresh ingredients is going to be a lot better than stuff made in a factory and then shipped in. So, as for me, let's see. I've got four bowls of gnocchi in front of me. I think I'll eat these because these are the warmest. These were the last ones out. So, excuse me, I'm going to go eat my gnocchi. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.